Okay, thank you very much. Let's get going. This is going to be the hottest show in Vegas, I have to tell you today. Literally and figuratively. Um, the next session in this room after mine is Joe Burton with an Elcom Soft update. Um, and then this track is the Roof Tent track. No, it's a big picture track. Did anyone here see me speak last year? Raise your hand. Okay, I tend to get a little bit excited, a little bit crazy up here on the stage because I get really worked up about what I'm about to talk about. Um, I try to pick topics I'm passionate about, in addition that are uh, you know fascinating and exciting. And then I'll, I'll play to the crowd, of course, because I think everyone heard of the Matrix, the movie Matrix, right? So we'll watch that later. <laughs> Especially if it gets any hotter in here, we'll just watch movies. Um, my name is Adam Bresson. I spoke last year on PHP protection. I spoke on Palm Security two years ago. Um, and uh, today I'm going to talk about consumer media protections. And uh, I'm going to ask some questions of you guys as I get started here. Has anyone burned a CD for a friend that they didn't buy before? <laughs> uh, right. All of you guys, everyone, men and women belong in jail, according to uh, the audio companies. Uh, do your DVD play? Yeah, well, that's what we're going to talk about. <laughs> Let's get excited about it. Come on. I'll be jumping on the chair. Okay, some other questions. Do you have your DVD player hooked up through your video or S video? Well, if you do, you're watching a degraded signal on your DVD player. We'll talk about why in a little bit and how you can avoid that. Uh, does anyone here own a copy of the movie with Mel Gibson, The Patriot? Come on, you can admit it. No one's going to get mad at you. I mean, really. I got Patriot. No one else does. That one has a unique protection on it for region coding. You'll find out. Have you guys ever, uh, does anyone here on a PlayStation 1 and copied a game or modified it so it would run? Yeah, right? You're all going to jail. How long does the U.S. copyright last? It lasts for 70 years, but they extend it by uh, 95 years if any member of your uh, estate is still alive. Also, as you guys go along, you'll see a uh, parentheses L. It means it's a link on the CD, on the DEF CON CD. I also have the links displayed up here and an R on the resource CD. Because everything I talk about, every piece of software is on that CD today. Or they wouldn't pay me. OK, let's get started here. Uh, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. We're going to talk today about consumer media protections in video games video signals and audio. And I'm going to show you guys a demonstration later of bypassing video signal. The slides? The slides? Don't they the slides? All right. That was a little Spanish. See, you learn something every day. There. Oh! No, there you go. Yeah! OK, just so you guys can see, my first slide has on it of all the great logos and things you'll enjoy. The Sony logo, the Recording Industry Association of America logo, the vicious, terrible, safe audio logo, and the Windows Media Player, which we probably wouldn't be here if Microsoft didn't cause problems with software, so we fixed them. All right, existing uh, consumer media protections in video games and audio. We're going to talk about the laws and the arguments pro and con. I know everyone gets up here and talks about the laws. But I'm going to give you guys three laws, three summaries, and then you can go brag tonight. You're going to go, like, oh, yeah, the Audio Home Recording Act. I know that one. So it'll be a test afterwards. I'm also going to show you, uh, talk a little bit about video game protections, what they do to protect your video games that you have. Um, and we'll talk about PlayStation 1 and 2 and the Xbox. Um, I'm going to show you guys uh, a few tips for bypassing these video game consumer media protections. I think this begs an important question. Why should we bypass these protections? Why is it our right to, as long as we protect the copyright? We have a right to back up anything. You buy it, you can back it up. I'm not up here advocating that everyone run around and go actually steal software or steal hardware. In fact, I want to read a notice right now to law enforcement officers I found. I do not consent to a search of my person, house, papers, effects, or motor vehicle. Because they can't catch it, it's so fast. I retain my Fourth Amendment rights and all other rights on the United States Constitution. So this is all within the bounds of education and fair use. We'll also be talking about video consumer media protections. I'm going to show you guys how to bypass a, a video consumer media protection. We'll talk about why you have that right. And we're also going to talk about how they protect audio CDs. That would be key to audio and safe to audio. Let me tell you guys.
guys some truth. I know this is going to make you guys angrier, angry than you already are as angry young people in America today. First off, this fact is by Jupiter Communications. So by the way, last year when I gave a talk, everyone said, well, where did you get these facts from? Now I'm showing you. So you can throw them out to your friends at parties. The first one, Jupiter Communications, when Napster and other file sharing users were still uh, trading music, they're 45% more likely to buy a CD than people who don't use file sharing. Someone who uses file sharing is 45% more likely to buy a CD. The Gartner Group said that when Napster was around, using uh, uninhibited without any lawsuits and you can trade anything you want. Remember the good old days when electricity was just coming around? CD sales were up 10% each quarter while Napster was unabated. That's a fact. That's undebatable. There's no other reason. They weren't releasing any better music or any different music. CD sales were up 10%. And they've dropped every quarter since Napster was closed down. Every quarter. Video business. Yeah. Applaud them. 20% of DVD players sold internationally are region free. Every DVD player you buy in the US has region one encoding. You can't play anything other than region one. That's it. But 20% are allowed into the marketplace. So you think about it, how many DVD players are out there internationally? 75 million throughout the world. And 20% don't have region free. It's illegal to sell region free in the United States. The SEC, 30% of Blockbuster game renters have pirated at least one of their PS1 games. That's according to Blockbuster's uh, annual report. They said that 30% uh, of their users pirate their games. And lastly, 40 million DVD players in the U.S. by the end of 2002. It's the fastest adoption rate of any consumer device. Faster than TV, faster than your Walkman. DVD went in there. All right, the first of three immutable laws, and the most important, the Audio Home Recording Act passed in 1992. It guaranteed consumers the right to use all analog and digital audio recording formats to make personal use copies of CDs and other digital sources of music. When Napster was around, they argued, uh, they argued rather, in the, uh, in the courts that uh, it was like tape trading. So they said every uh, single song that's shared online is personal use, but they lost. <laughs> And then they went bankrupt. And then they started other companies. And then those went bankrupt. So probably, you want to see within the bounds of fair use. Key points to remember, it refers to both analog and digital recording formats. This is a 10-year-old law. It protects all personal use. It refers to all current and future recording formats. It's not recording format specific. That's mini disc, memory stick, CDR, CDRW. It includes digital sources, as I mentioned before. And in mix, uh, mixtapes and non-copyrighted recordings are okay, but no money. That's how Napster was saying they got around it. Because since you didn't pay to join Napster, it was technically free, so no one was actually making money off the, the songs you traded. Now, the act that everyone hates in the whole world, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, is the second law that pertains to it. It bans the manufacture and distribution of devices designed to undermine technology used to protect copyrighted works. The key points, device is ambiguous. What does that mean? I mean, obviously, I've got a device up here. I didn't manufacture it, but it does that. I've got a device right there that actually enforces the protection. I didn't manufacture it. What's this device? This is my device. I don't know. Am I getting in trouble for that? Technology is nonspecific. It could be anything from one assembly language instruction to a 448-bit Blowfish encrypted routine. Simple to complex. And lastly, and the worst part about the Digital Rights Copy and Management Act, I want everyone to really focus on this and have a fireside moment with this, is that all those OEM manufacturers who are out of our country that are told to manufacture this device, if they don't pay a license to include protection like macrovision, technically they're violating U.S. law. If they do pay that license, they can't afford to manufacture the product. I know, let's cry about that one. Please, take a moment of silence. Thank you. The last act that's pertinent here, the No Electronic Theft Act. Sound recording infringements can be criminally prosecuted even where no commercial gain is derived from the infringement. This law was originally intended for software. It doesn't pertain to sound recordings at all, but it's been legislated as such. Commercial gain is redefined as anything of value and prosecuted, not monetary value. Any value, intrinsic value, shared value, whatever you want. 
Statue of Limitations extends to three years. Oh, you guys know these logos. Napster, Kazaa, and Bearshe. This is the last part of the legal part, the pro and con arguments. Okay, you guys, are you awake or what? I mean, seriously. Yeah. Come on, get up! This is exciting stuff! Thank you. Pro arguments for why you need to know these laws. You are guaranteed personal use reproduction rights about analog and digital sources and recording formats. The big five, the five recording and publishing companies that own 90% of your music, do not agree with that particular law. That was already passed. You may make song mixes under the ARA as long as they are not for commercial gain. You may trade recordings of non-copyrighted material as long as it is not for commercial gain. Against you for recording these things, you may not produce devices that disassemble or reverse engineer protection technologies for media. Does devices cause, uh, include software? I don't know. Apparently it did for Dmitry Skyloroff. You may not distribute copyrighted works for commercial gain. Publishing rights are usually controlled by ASCAP, usually. They're the largest lobby in the government. Now we're going to talk about video game consumer media protections. There are two uh, rental places here that I was uh, featuring. Blockbuster, which lets you rent games. They have this new Freedom Pass. I want to tell you guys about it. It's really cool. And then Get Any Game Online. It's a brand new website that I'll tell you more about at the end. It's pointlessly sh shameless self-promotion. And I want everyone to get excited about it, too. Video games. Most video games are not produced according... And we're going to get up and cheer. Remember that. Most video games are not produced according to PC-readable file systems, NTFS, etc. But instead they use uncommon sector sizes, boot block codes, or use non-standard structure to obscure the content. How many people want me to take my clothes off right now? Okay, that, that would be violating some law. I don't think it's any of the three we talked about. Many are rendered unreadable by CDR or CDRWs. Custom file systems are poorly documented or protected by non-disclosure agreements. This would be like the uh, Dreamcast and like the Xbox system. Remember, they have to be shared with someone. Someone has to get that information outside of the game companies. And oddly, I bet half the people in this room have that information. Some utilize key exchange and others. For PlayStation 1, media restrictions. They have CD-ROM and region coding, just like DVD players. The hardware authenticates region and media-based key during boot and refuses to load. Sony got, uh, <clears throat> got wise to what people were doing in pirating their games. So they decided they were going to release LiveCrypt, which is actually their encryption library that they plug on top of the game. That uh, The system is actually aware of whether or not you're using a mod chip. And then people learn to bypass that by looking like it's unmodified. Some games have custom consumer media protections, including extra files, unreadable data, or false headers, preventing many PC apps duplication success. Like this game, Driver 2. Thank you. PlayStation 2 media restrictions include its DVD-ROM and CD-ROM. This, to me, is the biggest mistake that Xbox and PlayStation 2 made, that they could still read CD-ROMs even though their format is DVD. Why would they do that? Just opens it up for everyone to do because you can burn CD-ROMs on your computer. But you never have. Hardware authenticates the region and media-based key. The corrupts the game if it fails. Mod chips come in different versions for region-free or specific region and also let you disable the key on it. Companies outside of the U.S. manufacture these. So protect your OEM manufacturers. Sony has successfully prosecuted mod chip manufacturers in the U.S. using DC, uh, uh, that's, uh, DMCA threats. Uh, PlayStation 2 uh, is going to be, they released a Linux package for it. I don't know if anyone has the Linux for PlayStation 2. It's really cool, but it boots with a different bootloader. So technically you can play pirated games without modifying it. Oh, that's what it says on the internet. I don't know, does anyone read the internet? Okay. Xbox consumer media protections, media restrictions, DVD-ROM, CD-ROM, and key encrypted. There are two chips for it, the extender chip and the Enigma mod chip. They play import and backup games, disable DVD macrovision, which we'll talk about in a second, and region encoding, which allows a custom code to boot up. There's been a recent push to get uh, Linux running on the Xbox, and I want to mention this because I really think this is a great idea, too. There's a contest for $200,000. It's in two forks. If you go to... Uh, um, uh, you'll see the link on here a little bit later. Uh, it's under the R1. You can actually go ahead and enter the prize and help contribute to the computing. So anyone knows how to program, that's a, a really good opportunity to get involved. 
Uh, there's an analysis of the Xbox protection, which you'll actually find it uh, excerpted on your CD-ROM. It's a, a talk that's done by an MIT computer scientist that talks about how to break into the bus uh, between the different components in the Xbox. Uh, it's really fascinating stuff, very light reading. Um, my friends who are here realize that I read it in the bathroom, and so uh, I didn't really understand it all, so I think I'm going to tackle it again. But the best part of the information is that when they published this, Slashdot got a cease and desist letter from Microsoft. Slashdot? They just published a link to the MIT paper. The guy was actually offered a job by Microsoft. And uh, this uh, protection actually sacrifices bus speed um, and for the complexity of the consumer media protection. So when you play your Xbox, you're actually playing an Xbox that's slightly diminished in its ability because they decided to use this consumer media protection. For console DVD playback, you pass your analog output from your unit through a video filter, like the SEMA color corrector, or the Zaria video filter. Both of them remove macrovision. I'm going to show you guys an example of macrovision when we get into the next section. To copy PlayStation 2 or Xbox games, you use a DVD ripper. It works. You can strip the protection out of it, too. Uh, I use Smart Ripper when I'm backing my games up. Options for PlayStation 1 consumer media bypass. Bootable CD or mod chip. Options for PS2, solder or no solder mod chip. And the options for the Xbox, solder mod chip. On the horizon, people are going to start creating hard drive game storage loaders. The Xbox is, box is using a, I think it's a 266 megahertz bus. So imagine pump it, plugging a hard drive into it through the expansion port and piping the game data directly into it. They already have a media player and a DivX player for it. I'm sure it's not Windows media player. Okay. PlayStation 1 game. I use my Toshiba laptop. I modify Nero using the settings and the link you have. I copy my game. Also, you can use a bootloader with it. So that you, can, you, know, you actually have to use a bootloader afterwards or a mod chip so you can bypass the live crypt or the other information. Before I go to the next part, I want to point something out to you guys. That I have a Weezer CD. You know the Blue Album, the very first one? It cost me $17 when I went and bought it from the store. This is four years ago. I had that, I played that CD like twice. I love the CD, but I actually burn it to MP3 and listen to the MP3s. I go back to play it the other day in my car, all happy, I'm like, woo, it looked just like Buddy Holly, and then it scratched out the whole thing. I don't know how it happened. I had to, luckily I had it backed up on MP3. When they take this right away, you'll go buy it for $17 again. Or you'll steal it, which I also don't think is a good plan. Okay, we're gonna talk about video consumer media protections. I'm going to actually leave out, uh, I'm going to go quickly through the last part, the audio protections for you guys, um, and I'm going to incorporate it with this part so you see it. Macrovision. When you buy a DVD or you buy an old VHS cassette, a company called Macrovision, the only company that provides DVD protection and VHS protection. Macrovision licenses their technology to everything. It's in your TiVo, it's in your DVD player, it's in your VHS player. Uh, they have applied... Um, Macrovision is PAL or NTSC. PAL is European, NTSC is American. They were actually sued by Verence, another company, because they copied their technology. However, they paid the company off. Anyone know how much money they paid the company to drop the lawsuit? $200 million. They wrote a check for it. That's how much cash they have. And a little experiment, when Harry Potter came out in the US, Warner Brothers decided they weren't going to pay the five cents per DVD to Macrovision encode it. They released it throughout the U.S. without macrovision on it at all. So that's something, actually, let's clap for them. Yeah. They saved um, $500,000 by printing all the DVDs without macrovision. Now, macrovision wasn't happy about that. No, they weren't. They required, they passed a, a uh, uh, actually a resolution for all their licensees that they have to have 100% coverage. So every DVD has to be released with it like other releases are, or there has to be an external label on it. Now this is interesting because Macrovision police themselves. What you'll see in the audio portion is no one's policing other people, especially the big five music. Macrovision adds a carefully timed electronic pulse to your video signal. Uh, it actually alternates high and low, and so DVD players and video recorders, especially VHS, can't uh, produce the error correction to reconcile that signal up and down. 
So that, uh, so when you, with your VCR, it doesn't work. But when you play it through your TV, I don't know if you guys are hooked up through uh, uh, RCA or SVHS. You'll notice that you, when when the action cuts really quickly, you'll see the screen actually like quickly like it'll it'll flash in and out, like it's being scrambled on cable television. That's because uh, TVs also can't react to macrovision as well. Um, so you'll see VHS tapes that alternate high. Is everyone really cool now? Because I haven't turned the air up. No, that's not true. Okay. <laughs> Some, va uh, sam some family videos are wrote and actually trigger macrovision. I have to point this out to you guys that I actually, my mom and my grandparents are in the room now. So let's all wave to them. So is my brother and my girlfriend. Because yes, I am one of the people at DEF CON who has a girlfriend. Thank you, I just want to point that out to you. Now, uh, I have these old family videos that I digitized for them and I realized that uh, my um, ATI card was triggering macrovision on my family videos, which I really didn't put macrovision on my family videos because I'd have to pay macrovision for it. So this is another reason why I think macrovision inhibits our uh, opportunity. Uh, DVDs may include macrovision or content scrambling system. Content scrambling system is a secret key that's exchanged between the DVD and the DVD player. That key, without it, you can't decode the MPEG-2 content on there. Macrovision is trigger distortion and is part of the video spec. This is a very important point. That macrovision and safe audio and key to, au to audio are designed to degrade your signal from the very beginning. You may not notice it all the time, but you're not getting the highest quality video that you can get. It only applies to the video on DVDs and VHS. Hardware consumer media protections. Your DVD analogs out. Your video and S-video macrovision enabled. They're enabled by a video processor like you see in your uh, own DVD player. I know you can buy on, uh, you can go search online and there's some links to information on it if you guys want to find out, but you can actually uh, hack the video processors inside. In fact, about three weeks ago, someone was going to give a talk on it, I think at InfoWorld, and he backed down because he was afraid uh, of prosecution for doing it. Um, he was actually modifying the equipment instead of using equipment that had that feature in it, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. ATI Radeon and all the Wonder Cards, they have a video processor embedded, so your macrovision, like I mentioned before, gets triggered right away. Uh, it's macrovision on the inputs and outputs. There are patches to remove it so that you can actually output VHS video without having macrovision on it, which is actually very important for family videos. ATI input drivers limit the input and S video, uh, S3 and NVIDIA are planning to add it in the future. Strategies and tools for VHS, SVHS or DVD. You can pass your analog output through a video filter, like I mentioned before, so you can get macrovision-free video copying. You can also use a non-macrovision inhibited monitor. Uh, the Canopus ADVC, which is produced by a European company, they actually produce the DV uh, algorithm that's inside of uh, Avid Express. Um, this lets you actually turn off the macrovision when you're sampling analog footage and pass it to your computer without macrovision on it. I'm going to show you guys that next. For ATI cards, you disable macrovision with a patch from Doom 9, which you'll find in link 4. It's a, it's a great information resource and site. It also contains tutorials and apps. And lastly, you can use analog video capture, which lets you go analog to analog instead of analog to digital video. You use an alternative macrovision-free capture cards. All the Pinnacles cards and Hot Pages cards don't have macrovision and let you capture video. All right, now I'm going to do a demonstration for you guys of what macrovision looks like here. Let me call up the necessary information. Has anyone in here ever captured analog video before for like, and then converted it to something like MPEG-2 or DivX? Did you guys encounter the macrovision problem, right? Now, why is it a problem? Because you're making a backup most likely for yourself or for testing editing, you know, actually re-editing video. There was a guy who did a re-edit of the Star Wars, the first movie. He was prosecuted by George Lucas, which kind of sucks because it wasn't that great of a movie anyway. And he actually did improve it.
Oh, lovely. I forgot to switch it to analog video. <laughs> There you go. Okay. Now we're watching the uh, Warner Brothers hit the Matrix here. Okay, the first step I'm using is Windows Media Capture. Uh, it's a quick little application that was set up by Microsoft. It uh, lets you capture DVD footage. Uh, Windows 2000 and XP contain built-in drivers for IEEE FireWire, which I'm using here. Um, I'm going to play for you an AVI file that has it Macrovision encoded, and then one that has it not Macrovision encoded. So I'm going to begin by performing a video capture. Okay, we'll capture a few moments of it here. Oh, zero frame dropped. Look at me. <laughs> okay, the video capture device that they use for DVD video and FireWire video. I'm going to capture about a thousand frames, which will be about equivalent to 20 seconds of video. Then I'm going to play it back for you guys now, so you can see what Macrovision does to it. And I'll quickly rename my file. And we'll use Windows Media Player. Windows Media Player, digital rights management. Uh, next year, I think it's going to become a really important issue. And I really hope someone talks about it. And if no one does, I will. So I think <laughs> digital rights uh, management is going to be, it's built into Windows Media Player since version 7, since everyone's going to have version 7. It'll be a really important topic. All right, come on, Microsoft. Don't fail me. I see. Here it comes. <laughs> but that's true. It was written in Visual Basic. See how the flash from light to dark occurs on the video? See so go in and out, light and dark? That's the telltale sign of macrovision encoding with it. Um, when you're actually looking at the content from something like the middle of the movie where you're going to see flesh tones, you'll see the light and dark will really become an issue. Now I'm going to show you a scene sample without the light and dark. See that switch right there? Now I'm going to show you how to turn the macrovision off and what the difference looks like. Okay, let's switch to another scene. Let's go to everyone's favorite scene, the uh, lobby shootout scene. Yeah, who doesn't like the lobby shooting script? A little bit of the old ultra violence. A little bit of the old ultra violence. Okay, here's a lobby shooting scene. Before I do it, I'm going to turn off macrovision. Now this. Uh, turning off macrovision on this device was a feature that they built into it. This is not a hack device. You buy this from store or online. Here's how you turn it off. Okay. If you hold this button down, you can get color bars up on this device. See the color bars pop up in a second. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Where are my color bars? Oh, everything was going so smoothly. Windows even booted up. All right, we're going to try this again. Okay, color bars. Now, 
The world loves color bars. Yes, they do. The world loves color bars, and so do you. All right, I probably turned it off anyway. You hold it for 15 seconds, the color bars turn on, then the color bars turn off, and no signal is macrovision encoded. Let's find out. All right, let's bring back that lobby shooting spree here. Lobby shooting spree. All right, well, we obviously seem to have a little problem with the Microsoft application involved. All right, let's restart that lovely application. All right. Oh, that looks good. I think we're on to something there. Let's see if I can bring the color bars up. Color bars, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, let's try to sample it now and see, because I am an optimist. Okay. Whew. I'm not sweating because the thing's not going exactly as planned. I'm sweating because it's so damn hot in here. I was going to come in shorts, you know? But then I was like, my shorts, because I've been melting since I've been in the heat, they actually didn't fit so well. It was very embarrassing. They would fall down every time I talked. All right, let's check out the capture and see if it has macrovision removed. And if it does, I want everyone in this room to shout, yell, and whoop. Uh-oh, see, that didn't go well right there. All right, let's bring this lovely program up one more time. I'll try one more time. Okay. There is lobby shooting spree. It looks to me like lobby shooting spree doesn't have macrovision, but we'll find out. Lobby shooting spree. Lobby shooting spree. Here we go, lobby shooting spree, capture. All right. Whew. So is everyone excited about the next two Matrix movies next year? Yeah, so am I. I don't know, I looked, actually I saw in the news before I came here that they're doing something at the end where they have 14 minutes of footage that was never, ever attempted before. According to the producer, Joel Silver, it's never, it never will be duplicated again. It's that elaborate. So and I'm really excited to see it. Well, it looks like here, everything went according to plan. All right, let me call up the unmac revision. And really, I want a big cheer for this one. Took all this work, for Lord's sake. Uh, Microsoft, please. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. Can't even remember my own name, it's so hot in here. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, if all goes according to plan, I'm going to pull two rabbits out of my hat. Yeah! No macro vision! Thank you! Now, this device is sold this way. I can't emphasize that enough. I didn't do anything that was really tricky. They want you to be able to sample your video fit it, footage, and I think that's very important to do. For Lord's sake. Let's go back to the... Okay. This device is $200. You get it anywhere online. Um, it's really good. All right, let's get the last part of it here. I got a treat for you guys at the end, too. I promise you stick around. I've got a treat for everyone in this room, but only this room. Audio, consumer media protection, scary facts, the U.S., the first U.S. CD released with copy protection was Charlie Pride's Tribute to Jim Reeves. No one here knows who Charlie Pride is. Yeah. Charlie Pride! Yeah. It resulted in a lawsuit in California. According to Jupiter Communications, only 2% of CD buyers ripped to MB3 and published first-generation material to file-sharing services. 2%. 2%. Not 500%. Not 90%, not 95%, but 2% do first generation recording. I love this. Eminem's The Eminem Show, the most pirated and swapped CD on the internet. You can go to Music 369 or listen forever. Download the whole CD. 
So they're all fearful because piracy is going to ruin music, right? It sold 1.3 million copies in a week. That's it. It sold 2 million copies in 10 days. Even though people pirated the CD, it still sold better than any other CD. As a comparison, Counting Crows, Hard Candy, sold 180,000 in 12 days. So Eminem's CD was definitely a success even though there was piracy out there. So apparently the argument that piracy exists doesn't inhibit CD sales when the music's good or interesting. Huh, there's an idea. Big five music di distribution companies control 90% of your music, 90%. So uh, you saw before that I showed you Celine Dion. I know how much everyone loves Celine Dion in here. And in sync, you know, it's like, ah, ah, like that, whatever. <laughs> Their CD was protected. Six million on average is the assumed amount of consumer media protected CDs that have been slipstreaming to U.S. retail. Six million CDs. One second, I'll answer questions at the end for you. Safe Audio, which was created by Macrovision. Lovely people at Macrovision give us safe audio. You'll see two links on it. I've included their facts so you guys can find out a little bit more about it. So that's, again, more bathroom reading. It was developed for $20 million by Macrovision and a company in Israel, TTR. It was introduced in 2001. All the big five labels are looking at adding it by 2002. By the end of 2002, almost all of your CDs, new CDs, are likely to be encoded with safe audio. Everyone but Sony are most likely going to use it, and I'll show you why. Three different components. There's a coding protection, a timing protection, and hiding audio tracks from the PC. The way they hide the audio tracks from the PC is they simply get rid of the header. And the PC can't read the file header, so there's no file fork in it at all. It works by exploiting the poor error, whoa, poor error corrections. It looks like their same scheme for video. Version 3 works at the music and data's bit level. It also can protect software CDs, random bits, corruptions, and things like that that fool you. Safe audio coding protection structural is rated 99% readable in consumer media. They actually say they're going to follow Redbook, which is the audio CD standard. Key 2 audio, developed by Sony for $40 million. You guys might recall what happened to that about a month ago. Sony labels and licensees get access to that. That's Epic, 550, Sony, and uh, the list goes on. More than 17 million Key2 audio C uh, consumer media protection CDs are in circulation, including Celine Dion's latest, which my mom got, and uh, she realized she can't play it in her computer. Works by placing a special hidden signature and junk data files on the outside of the CD at the end of the burn process. And the audio portion of the CD for Key2 audio follows and conforms to the Red Book standard. It's an unchanged stream. That's what they like to say in their information. It's an unchanged stream. Well, of course it follows the Red Book standards because protection is not built into the Red Book standard. So Philips Media, who developed the Red Book standard, is telling all the companies that they can't put a CD logo, a CD audio logo, on the outside of their CDs because it doesn't follow Red Book, really. Strategies. Yes, I really advocate that. The point is, CDs are the last uncorrupted medium. Every video you buy or rent has macrovision built in and it's degraded. That's it. And now they're going to degrade that as well. You analyze it, uh, audio CMPs with Clony XXL. Clony XXL is a program that lets you, uh, it lets you actually analyze a CD and find out what copy protection is going on. It even gives you the clone CD burn properties on it. Um, so you will find that, whoa, whoa, getting crazy here with the cheese whiz. Um, da, da. I've included Clony XL for you guys on the CD, the latest version of it. This is the contents of the CD here. It contains Clony XXL, the CDFS, which is a file system for Windows 98 that lets you uh, drag and drop waves. So it's not CDA, CD audio, it's wave files automatically. And uh, it also, uh, I also put Clone CD here for you guys, which can use the raw mode of your CD to burn. Uh, buy a raw mode CD, uh, CD burner. Every light on CD above 16x lets you write in raw mode, which means it's actually, actually grabbing the actual bits off of the CD, and you can duplicate uh, audio protected CDs for your backups. Uh, discover the specifications and burning uh, techniques for consumer media protections at CD Media World. That's that link number six. For safe audio CDs, you can use the analog to digital trick. You'll always, hopefully, 
be able to play the left and right out of your CD player into something else. So I use a patch cable and patch it into the back of my computer, record it as wave, split it up with a program, and then actually convert it to MP3. And there's no noise on it if you actually set the levels properly. For key to audio CDs, you employ the wonderful black marker method. So a $40 million technology, you take a black Sharpie marker, you run it around the outside of the CD a quarter inch. Now, wonder they don't want to label it, because you'd be running around with a CD with a Sharpie. The analog to digital, of course, you get the patch line out to line in from Radio Shack, record wave, and convert to MP3. But the last and the interesting option, which I have a link to, is there's a product called the Pogo Rip Flash, which actually live converts to MP3. And you can actually go audio out left and right to the microphone in. It will actually encode right there for you MP3. It's a great product. I've used it. For the demonstration, I'm just pointing out to you guys that you use Kony XXL, identify the, uh, identify the protection. And then you convert it to MP3, you get a clean copy. And actually, if you want to use the SP diffs on your, uh, the back of your sound card, if you guys have an XG or another sound card, you get a pure digital copy. You can actually go digital out from source like this. I read your DVD player right in there. All right, let's close up here. Again, we went over video games, video, and audio protections. The realities are that anything digitally created will be bypassed. That's it. It will always be bypassed. It's just a step ahead or a step behind. True protection would remove the incentive or economic of commercial gain. Copyright laws tend to be outdated. We talked about the three most important laws. The laws I discussed provide consumers with well-defined personal use rights. I have to point this out to you. We have those rights. They're ours. The big five record companies are taking the law into their own hands. They're not lobbying for new laws. They're not passing new laws with, uh, by helping senators to write up the bills. They simply say, we're going to break the Audio Home Recording Act. We're, they're breaking the law. Your congressmen probably listened to Wave and MP3 files behind their closed doors. Evidence of this is the fact that there was a report that Congress had to issue an edict saying you couldn't use file swapping shares on the government computer, file swapping programs on the government computers. Why? What are you doing anyway? What you guys can do, because this is the part where you've already been so worked up by what's going on, that it's extremely important that you go out there and do something about it. Simple economic formula, the best offer is the most accepted and successful op uh, option. That's it, it's economics. If the record companies told you that for one dollar or a quarter, you could download the 100% certified song from a high-speed server from their site, you'd pay the 25 cents instead of waiting for someone who's located in Germany, say, on their 56K modem to download half the song, which features at the end his little dog going, woof, woof. I mean, come on. You want the 100% certified song from a free server. That's it. So they have to create best offers. They have to release high quality, high caliber efforts. They're actually good. Good stuff will still sell. Lower the price of CDs. They've already begun to do it. $10, $8 offers when you go to Best Buy first week. I believe in this. They cost 50 cents to make. And that's at their inflated prices. We know they're only approximately 25 cents if you go to Fry's. Reduce price and restrictions on downloadable music. Press Play, MusicNet, the two companies that are started by the top big five, they decided that they would uh, launch two years ago. Oh, they just launched a month ago. And they still haven't licensed their technology out to other companies yet. This is wrong. Not only are they breaking the law, but they're breaking antitrust laws. Stop placing consumer media protections on video games, video signals, or audio that degrades the quality of what you buy or play. This is anti-consumer. Why would they want to piss us off? We're already pissed off enough at everything that's big in government. What you guys can do, continue the legal personal use of consumer media by exploring protections. Educate anyone who will listen to you. Preserve your right to back up your expensive purchases such as DVDs and CDs. You guys are paying $15, $25, and you can't back it up. But when it's gone, they make you pay again. Refuse to buy CDs that are marked as protected. Wow, he told us that they don't mark the CDs. Actually, in tiny, tiny, tiny print on the back of key to audio only protected CDs, you'll say something that says, will not play on Mac or PC. That's very nebulous. What does that mean? It means that it's uh, actually uh, key to audio protected. Or lastly, buy a black Sharpie and wear it around your neck with you. You'll find all the files on, my, on the DEFCON CD. Now I want to introduce you guys to, uh, with my shameless plug, that will take one minute for the company that I started with two other people. And I'll tell you guys about a giveaway that's coming up today. 
while I put away my stuff. Actually, I'd like to invite Scott Nguyen on stage right now. He's one of my two partners in it. We did, we did a company that's called Get Any Game. And what you do is you can rent video games online, but also you take your old video games you don't play, you send them in, we rent them on your behalf, and we pay you. That's it. So do no oh. longer do you have to sell it back to Blockbuster and make your $7 on a $45 game. We'll rent it, we'll pay you guys for it. And today what we did is we bought tattoos, temporary tattoos for everyone in the audience. We're going to walk up and down the aisles and give them out. And at 3.30 today, there will be a showgirl at the convention hugging anyone who's wearing a Get Any Game tattoo. <laughs> showgirls! Video games! Consumer media protections! Thank you guys very much. Look for the people in the aisles. No, just... Okay, stay in your seats if you want a tattoo and you want a hug from a showgirl. <laughs>